This is McTile, my brand new tile restricted ultimate Iron Man. I started with just a single tile, and every 1000 XP I gain, I get to unlock a new one. I'm unlocking RuneScape one tile at a time. The goal? RuneScape's biggest challenge, the Inferno. In the last episode, we set our sights on the Lost Tribe quest. We're trying to get the Bone Crossbow to focus on a powerful range build for the account, and last episode, we knocked out almost all the requirements for the quest. But we took a little detour to pest control for money, tiles, and ranged armor, and, well, we ran into a bit of an issue. But first... Oh, sorry, didn't see you there. I bet it looks like I'm in a lot of different places right now, but, uh, I'm just spoofing my location with ExpressVPN. See, it's this easy to stay secure and stay private online with ExpressVPN. I can be anywhere I want because ExpressVPN has servers in 94 different countries. There's so many things ExpressVPN can do. Not only can you secure and protect your online data, but you can also unblock any content that is currently blocked in your region. For example, since I'm in the United States, I can't watch South Park on Netflix. So all I've been doing is opening up ExpressVPN, switching my location to the UK, and it's that easy. This also works for Rick and Morty, Modern Family, and so much more. It'll also work for practically any streaming service you use. Security and convenience is what ExpressVPN is all about. Find out how you can get three months for free by visiting expressvpn.com settled or clicking the link in the description. Thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring. They said it couldn't be done. They said I would never win a pest control game. Well, I'm about to win a pest control game. I think more importantly, I'm about to get credit for winning my first pest control game. Uh, this is the first time I was actually able to do enough damage to keep my activity bar up. And we just got our first three pest points. That's right, baby. All I need now are 847 more and I can get my full void. This is the Void Knight. If he dies, we lose. There's four of these portals around the map and we need to break them to win. The portal health as well as my activity bar is displayed on my screen at all times. So let's take a look at the optics of this grind. It takes 850 points to get a full Void range set. And uh, honestly, I'm not really sure how many points per hour I can get right now. But for clarity's sake, let's just say 50 pest points an hour. We're looking at a 17 hour grind here, which to be completely fair, I am totally fine with. As long as I can kind of consistently get points, I'm still training and making money here. I'm currently making 520 GP per win, and I'm also getting around 500 XP per game. So that's actually not bad. I dare you to step here. Joke's on you, buddy. I already unlocked this tile. It's looking like another 0% activity bar game, so I'm not gonna be getting credit for this one. If I had fire strikes here, actually, I could save it. Definitely should have done this at the very start of the pest control grind, because now I can actually do damage at range this is such a big help, I might actually be able to save my activity bar every single game. The Void Knight's gonna die. Oh, dude, you guys, you guys actually will not believe how long I've been here, though. Like, I have 27 points, and I've been here for nearly an hour and a half. I am not kidding. I swear, I've been here for that long, and I have 27 points. I need to call in some support. And I'm on the boat and I need you in here now. Holy shit, dude. I haven't played this game in years. These are the only tiles I've unlocked. I can literally only protect the Void Knight. <laughs> <laughs> go, do, go, go do damage to the portals. I need you to care. Thank you, man. <laughs> go, go, dude, go you're, I don't trust portals. you to stay here by yourself. You've got a chef's head on. I can't yeah. trust you to keep this guy alive. <laughs> Look at this. What would you do if I wasn't here right now? Uh, I I don't know. Update, we have scored another W. We are, uh, what about, a little over three hours in, I'd say, and we're at 87 points. Hey, there's 40 strength. That's six strength levels since I started this grind. That's that's the good part is no matter, you know, win or lose, I'm still gaining XP at least. Another W in the bag, 159 points. Oh, a magic level. Okay, not exactly what I was expecting, but I guess I have been fire striking a lot. What an important game. Oh my goodness, 100. 100k on the account, 225 pest points. This guy has lost control of his life. 45 strength, that's really nice. I'm gonna get one more level because that gets me another max hit and I can uh, move to attack after that for a bit. Gotta restock the runes. They've been such a massive help in keeping my activity bar up, so we're gonna keep them coming. I decided to unlock this five tile stretch here over to the south door because this, along with having fire strike casts, has given me a lot more activity and 
Also, I can literally save entire games by being able to close this door. 46 strength. That's a new max set. Onto attack we go just for a few levels. My team does not appreciate my comms. I, I think our team chemistry could really use some work. Oh, I need to be the hero. Come on, Mictail. This is on you. This is on you. I think I got it. Come on. Yes. I saved okay, it. Oh my yes. god, we did it! Yes! <laughs> no oh, way! Oh, we did it! Oh, shit. 43 attack. Back to strength we go for now. 375 points. 47 strength. We're at 5 days and 20 hours played, so I'm gonna use this as a measure of uh, how many points per hour I get. 50 strength, the big number! Uh, that's really satisfying to see. I think I'm gonna switch over to defense now, because I, I, I have a rune kite in my inventory and I still can't wear it. Let's go get 40 defense now, even things out. We are now at 6 days and 42 minutes played, and I've gained 2 200 pest points since the last time I checked, so I guess we're currently about 40 points an hour. I have 600 points right now. We're at 717 points, so that's all for today for me. Uh, we can finish this grind off tomorrow, and I can go uh, buy my void set, so. I don't know how in the world I missed that, but apparently I got 40 defense. I just wasn't paying attention, so we can now wear the rune kite shield i've been waiting dude i just went from zero defense bonus to like 50 with one item and uh it's gonna be my shield for however long it takes to get to the inferno i guess unless i find something better somehow but uh really happy to be able to wear this i'm just gonna keep working on defense for now i'm pretty happy with 45 attack and 50 strength so i'm just gonna try to get my defense up to 45 before i finish off my void set i'm pretty damn close at this point yeah pretty solid defense bonus now that i have an actual shield hey there's 42 defense i haven't actually talked about this because it was kind of a non-factor but i can now actually wear the void that I've been uh, working almost 20 hours for. You also need 42 attack, strength, ranged, and mage to wear full void, but I'm at almost 800 points right now, so I figured I'd kind of have all the stats I needed to wear it before I got it, so uh, it turned out to be the right case. Anyway, I'm gonna try to get 45 defense before I get these final 80 points, and then I'll be done. This is it, the final game of pest control. Let's do it, baby. Not quite gonna get 45 defense, but uh, I will be happy with 44. Uh, great progress on the melee stats. There we go, the pest control grind is done. 852 points, it took right around 19 hours to get this many points. Uh, a lot of a lot of missed games, a lot of failed games. Gained five attack levels, 16 strength levels, and 14 defense levels. So you could say on that front, it was extremely successful. Ended with 207k cash. So I think this was such a brilliant thing to do before getting the bone crossbow, because I can afford so much ammo for that now. It's gonna be very, very satisfying to buy every single piece of this. Let's start with the Void Knight top, and we get the Void Knight robe, and the Void Knight gloves, and one final piece. Void Range Helm. There we go. Two points left to spare, and we now have full range void, which looks really awkward for me because I'm not used to wearing any kind of melee gear with it. In fact, if I saw someone wearing this exact gear, I think they're extremely new to the game. Not gonna be wearing the longsword and kite shield that much longer though. I'm on my way to get this crossbow and make the dream gear a reality here. We have 252 tiles to work with after pest control, so I can make some significant progress. While I'm in the area, I am gonna grab some crafting supplies. Crafting isn't super crucial to me right now, but I do wanna get up to 22 crafting. That's gonna lock the games necklace for me, or a sapphire necklace, and I can then enchant it. The games necklace is super useful for multiple different teleports, so I do wanna slowly start creeping up to it. I'm just gonna kinda passively train this and do an inventory of glass every now and then, but right now the focus is still the final quest to start the Lost Tribe, which is Goblin Diplomacy. This quest takes place north of Falador, which takes a lot of tiles to walk to, but the real tile investment is actually the items that I need to complete the quest. I need to get my hands on blue and orange dye, and I need access to the Witch and Drainer to make all of the dyes for me. That is a lot of tiles for just the three different items I need, but let's get started with the tiles that I got from Pest Control and see how far we can get. There's 11 crafting, decent progress for now. Operation number one is getting onions for the orange dye that I need for the quest, and there is an onion patch right here in the back of Fred's farm. And I think this is absolutely the play because even though it may look like a lot of tiles, 
I'm also going to need to get to the ham hideout later in the Lost Tribe quest, which means I get halfway there while getting onions that I need for goblin diplomacy. I'm trying to make a path that kind of both benefits going to the ham hideout and to the onion patch. I'd want to try to find like a healthy medium between the two here. Yeah, this is definitely way cheaper than using the Remington portal. I'm actually going to hop worlds here. Yeah, it saves me some tiles hopping to a world where the gate is closed because that way I don't have to walk around it to open it, so... Uh, let's uh, hump worlds again, just get two onions. All right, fine, I got three. Just in case I eat one, you can never be too careful. Uh, now let's go get some woad leaves. I'm gonna have to go to Falador for that, so I'm gonna need some water runes. All right, let's teleport on over to Falador. And so many music tracks unlocked. Not a bad spawn either, I'm thinking, on that teleport. As long as I'm using the minimap, it should always take me on the shortest path over there. So I'm just gonna double minimap click, and we have to go pretty deep into the Falador park here, because... The guy is all the way in the corner. I think I'm just going to wait for him to walk over here. I'm just going to hop a couple worlds, see if I can get him in this exact spot. There we go. We got him. Weiss and the gardener. I'm going to need some woad leaves, sir. And if we tell him that we want to pay 20 coins, he actually gives us two because we're so generous. And that is all we need for our blue dice. Now, all I need is red berries and I can get uh, all the dyes I need for the quest. And normally, I'd probably have to spend a lot of tiles to get red berries because they are all the way north of the Varrock East Mine, and that is pretty damn far. I'd probably have to spend 50 plus tiles, but I'm already so insanely close to this shop. Okay, he's actually at a perfect spot right now. There we go. That is, that is literally ideal. I just spent three tiles. I'm gonna hop worlds. I need two more pairs of red berries, and then I'm good. Come on over, buddy. Yeah, there we go. There we go. We caught him. Beautiful. Three pairs of red berries, and that only costed me three tiles. That was literally perfect. I was originally thinking I'd have to uh, go over to the red berry bush, but I remembered the store actually sold them. So uh, I'm super happy about that. I a lot of tiles on the red berries, and now I get to use those to get closer to the witch and drainer. So that's going to be a lot of tiles. I'm actually not sure if I'll even have enough to get to the goblin village after this, but our path to drainer is going to start from over here. I think this is the best place to do it from. Pretty hefty tile investment it's looking like. Uh, this is kind of brutal, actually. I was, damn, I really did not expect it to be this expensive. There's no way I can get to the goblin village after this. So I am going to have to probably grind some tiles out, but... If we can get her by the door, that would be excellent, but I might have to step like at least one inward. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, perfect. Okay, this is a solid spot to find her, and I only had to walk one inward, so we absolutely take that. Oh, okay. That actually worked perfectly. I didn't even... I could have done that from a distance. Look at that. You can actually do this from a distance. I had no idea. As long as you use the ingredients, you can do it from a distance. Okay, good to know. That is all three dies down for Goblin Diplomacy. 60 tiles left over, and we have all three. Um, obviously that was extremely expensive. I think I left pest control with like 240 tiles. So we used 180 just to get the three dies and we haven't even gotten to the place where you start the quest. That is pretty brutal, but at least I have some of Drainer unlocked for the future. That's always going to be nice. Even though I've gotten hundreds of goblin males in the past, this is the one time I actually need them. So I just need three. Uh, I get to dye the goblin males and then I'm out. Gotta have to combine these to make orange dye. There we go. There's the last goblin male. Perfect. All right. So I just have to dye two of these and the last one stays the same. Okay. So we're good to go. That's all three. And I just need the tiles to actually get to the village now, which is the main problem. My guess is that I'm going to need over a hundred tiles to get over to the goblin village. So I'm just going to do a mix of things. Looking back on it, I probably should have gotten the tiles before I got these goblin males in my inventory, but I just wanted the goblin males. All right. I'm just going to do a mix of a bunch of skills to get over to that 100 plus tile goal. I'm going to start with some crafting because I still want to creep up to 22 crafting, but I'll probably throw in some fishing, cooking, and thieving as well. Good morning! And by that I mean uh, it's actually very late at night. Um, I have been fishing and cooking for quite a while. As you can see, I've got 170 tiles stocked up, which takes a while uh, at these docks, but bottom line is I have enough tiles to complete Goblin Diplomacy, and that's the last thing I need before I can get started on Lost Tribe. So super anticipated for me. Literally all I need right now is some water runes, I think, and I can teleport to Falador. And all right, let's teleport on over to Falador. Let's see where we spawn. Oh, good spawn point on the teleport. Perfect. I was going to unlock this tile anyway. So, so I've been seeing these comments about the shortest path plugin. All right. I know it exists. I haven't been using it because it, it just kind of feels like it, it maybe takes away some of the charm of me just figuring out my own path. 
but I get it if it's annoying for you guys to see me waste tiles. But yeah, if you don't already know, it literally just shows me the shortest path to get someplace, and then I can just follow along on those tiles to go there. The thing is, is like, the way the minimap works is it literally will take you to the shortest possible path to get to wherever you clicked on the minimap. So the minimap is pretty much exactly as precise as the plugin would be. So, you know, it doesn't really matter, but... I don't know, let me know. Luckily, it looks like we are gonna make it with plenty of tiles to spare, which makes me very, very happy. And the Goblin Generals are both near the doors. Perfect, okay. The cutscene does make me unlock a pretty useless tile a bit further into the first floor, but it's really not that big of a deal. I mean, it's literally just one tile and should put me back to where I was, so. Yeah, it does. Okay. Yeah, that's literally just one tile, so I don't really mind that. This quest is literally just a Goblin fashion show, so uh, there's really not much depth to this one. Oh my god, I unironically waited like eight minutes for that dude to walk up to me. This may actually be a record for slowest goblin diplomacy completion just because of how long I waited for that. 14 crafting as a reward, and we can now make Zerishian hats and leather armor. Beautiful. All right, so that is done, which means we now have every single requirement for the Lost Tribe quest. Nice to see them all checked off, but of course we only have 38 tiles, which is not nearly enough to complete this quest. We're gonna have to go through the Goblin Cave system for this quest, which is gonna take a lot of tiles, and I don't really know how many it is. I do have one new skill that I wanna train for some tile unlocks because it's gonna make me quite a bit of money, um, but otherwise I am probably gonna have to fish and cook a little bit more. I think it's very important that we just knock out these tiles, get this quest done, and then we can start the exponential account growth. 64 fishing. Yo, 65 cook it. Actually a really legit unlock. Pineapple pizza is good to have in the back pocket, dude. That feels 22 for a pineapple pizza. That's an S tier food in this game, man. About 154 tiles right now. I've been fishing for a while and, uh, I think this is where I will be calling it temporarily. We're gonna be making a tile investment, uh, Granted, what I need right now is tiles, but I do think it's worth investing uh, some tiles in what I'm about to unlock. We're going to be headed to our Ardoin for the first time in the series, and we're going to be training some thieving. We could go there through Brimhaven, and it literally costs 30 coins here to travel there, so. And, uh, yeah, here we are. Where we want to go from here is this center market area. I'm just going to be stealing from the bakery stall pretty much until 28 thieving. Obviously, we're making a pretty significant tile investment right now, even though what I need is tiles to complete the quest that I'm trying to complete. But I really do think this is a worthy investment. I'll be able to get most of my tiles back just from probably like a couple hours of doing this and I'll be able to train a new skill and 28 thieving is what I'm going for with this because it'll unlock a method to get nature runes that doesn't cost anything so that's what I really want right now. Twenty eight thieving beautiful that wasn't too bad took about half an hour to get that and we now have unlocked the nature in chest I guess a very intense lock on this one All right So now we just go upstairs and this right chest is the only one that we're after the left one is uh, Useless to us, but this chest will restock a nature rune every eight seconds if timed perfectly You can get 240 nature runes per hour this way So I'm just gonna stay until I have probably around 400 and uh, I think I'll be super happy with that. 30 thieving, 31 thieving, 33 thieving. This is about to be my 400th nature rune, and I've gotten 34 thieving, so I think that's where I'm gonna call it. I think I'm actually really satisfied with 400 natures. I'm only three fletching levels away from making maple longbows right now, and I really wanna use my nature runes on maple longbows. I'd make a lot of money doing that. They alk for significantly more than willow longbows, and I'm desperately still in need of tiles right now, so the more money and tiles I can get at the same time, the better. 61 wood cutting, okay. Dragon axe unlocked, as if I'm gonna get that. There's 54 fletching. We can now make uh, nothing useful, honestly, but one more level to go and we can move on to maple logs. We're up to 200 available tiles now. I've spent a pretty long time fletching today. I'm on the verge of getting to 55 and I've also made, what, another 20K while doing this. The level I've been waiting for, 55 fletching. I can now fletch maple longbows and broad bolts, which uh, will probably see a pretty big use maybe in the future of the account uh, but right now maple longbow is all I'm really after all I really care about before I do that I might as well spend the 220 tiles I currently have stocked up I don't know how deep into the lost tribe that's gonna get me for all I know maybe I'm just horribly wrong and this is uh, you know this is close to enough we'll see so the start of this quest is where I could end up using some tiles but this is a chance to hopefully get lucky and save some 
Uh, so Sigmund is about to ask me to talk to one of five people uh, in Lumbridge. There's a chance that it's someone I've talked to already, and there's a chance that it's someone that I've never talked to in Lumbridge, and I'm gonna have to unlock a path to them. Uh, the quest helper is telling me to talk to Bob, so we're just gonna hope it's him, because I already have him unlocked. Okay, perfect. It is Bob, so we're gonna be saving some tiles at the start of the quest. That is a great sign. Uh, love to see it. Let's, uh, go continue. So for the next part of this quest here, I'm gonna need a light source, so I'm gonna make myself a candle lantern. I still have to buy the candle, of course. Thankfully, the candle maker is pretty close. This is our first investment of tiles into this quest, but it's really not that bad, so. There we go, we got our candle, and we put it in the lantern, and we are chilling. We have a solid light source now, so let's go down to the basement. This is where the large bulk of the tiles of this quest are gonna go. This underground tunnel system is so ridiculously long and has so many different curves and twists and turns and uh there is a specific path to uh traverse it i'm actually completely out of law runes now so i do have to make a quick trip to the mage bank i'm just gonna stock up in bulk so that i have to make this trip as few times as possible i really don't like making it of course i, I just am gonna be very vigilant yeah i can't really transport myself anywhere without law runes so just like that we're in we're out 150 law runes invested oh my god i completely forgot this part of the quest existed i have to go all the way deep into verog castle i completely forgot Oh no, this is so many tiles. Dude, when I started this challenge, you, you really underestimate just how many tiles you walk on in this game. It is so ridiculous. I just spent over a hundred just for one step in this quest. And uh, I'm gonna have to spend at least like 300 more, so. I don't have any water runes. All right, back to best control we go. All right, so these guys are gonna teach me the two greatest emotes in the game, the goblin bow and the goblin salute. And now we are ready. Okay, it's time. Let's see how deep we can get with 107 tiles. So this is the path I have to take. Um, <laughs> as you can see, it, it winds. It, it winds all the way. And then I, all the way at the end is where I need to get to, so. Yeah, um, let's see how far we can get. Four tiles left. Honestly, it feels like I got pretty far there. How... Oh, desperate times call for fishing and cooking because you can always rely on that. Catherby has been my home for a while now, 66 fishing, and of course 162 tiles now. I'm gonna go cook these uh, seven lobsters here, and we're gonna see. We're gonna see if that can get me through the rest of the goblin caves. I'm really hoping it does. Yeah, we're getting an extra tile here, 163. If this isn't enough, I'm gonna have to go chop some maple logs. I think I'm done fishing and cooking for now. I can almost enter the fishing guild. My fishing and cooking has gone beyond what I thought I'd get it to, so. All right, it's time. We're picking up right where we left off. Let's see how deep I can get this time. God, I think we might actually make it. It's gonna be super close. It's uh, it's really gonna be really, really close. No, no, don't tell me. Five tiles, four. I just have to talk to Mistag right there. I don't know where he can go. I don't know his wander range. I only have one tile left. Surely he can come over here. I, I feel like he can. I'm just gonna wait for a bit. See if he can wander here, because it would save me quite a bit of time if he could come over here. Um. So anyway, what are you guys up to? Oh my god, he's real. He is real, guys. He can come down here. That took so long. Oh, that is such a relief. This definitely saves me quite a bit of time, so um, I am very, very happy because I would have had to walk through the entire tunnel again where now he can... Oh. Oh, that was kind of sketchy. That was honestly a little sketchy. I didn't realize that would use a tile uh, at him escorting me back. Um but I'm glad we only used one there. That's good. So uh, we are back and we have zero tiles. Rem I don't even remember the last time I had zero tiles remaining. That, that really cut it close, but it did save me quite a bit of time doing that. So we're back in the green. I can breathe again. 
Uh, I am actually gonna go uh, to some old habits. I'm gonna fire make a little bit here just to get a couple of tiles because I think I'm gonna need at least like 10 to 15 to unlock the path to the maple trees. So I think 11 tiles should be enough to get to the maple trees. Another quick crafting trip, 16 crafting. Honestly, I've got some spare time right now. I might actually just finish off 22 crafting just so I don't have to do these passive trips anymore. If I just dedicate like half an hour to this, uh, make a couple of trips. I can get 22 crafting. So 17, 18, 19, 20 crafting, 21. Well, I just missed it, but that is 22 crafting. Now make sapphire necklaces. Not going to be making it anytime soon, but it is very, very good to have in the back pocket. I'm just going to make the rest of this glass. But now that that's out of the way, that's one less thing to focus on and I can go chop my maple logs now. Decided to fish and cook a couple more tiles because I wasn't sure how many it's going to take me to get here, but Oh, it looks like it wasn't that many actually 10 tiles 11 tiles okay so what's so beautiful about this is i can fletch maple longbows now and they alk for 192 coins each which means if i get rid of all these nature runes i should make right around 80 kgp this is honestly so chill because i get to stay in one spot and i think that is by far my favorite thing about this with willow longbows it's pretty annoying because i had to follow my like specific tile path to get to the general store and sell the longbows and you know, wait for the general store owner to be in the right spot. This is so easy, so fast, so much more money. I love this so much more. I get to train my magic. I get to train my woodcutting and fletching. It's honestly pretty beautiful. This is going to be the last inventory that I fletch in Alk because it looks like I have enough tiles to finish up the quest. So I'll see you guys over there when I Alk all this stuff. The final stretch of tile unlocks. All I have to do is walk up here, get into the ham hideout, and bring back the silverware, exposing Sigmund as a fraud. It should be in this crate, so actually not even nearly as many tiles. Wait, what? Oh, I gotta pickpocket Sigmund. That's what happens when you uh, try to do a quest off memory instead of... Uh, following a guide. All right, we got the key from Sigmund, and all I have to do is go to the room next door, and I do get a set of ham robes from this. Not that that really means anything to me, but if I were to do Death to the Dorgishin next as a follow-up quest, uh, it would save me some time to have these ham robes, but... I'm not really interested in doing that right now. Retrieve the silverware. Let's get back there and finish this thing. So I never have to walk through those tunnels ever again, but does this take me on different tiles? It does. Oh, it just unlocked a lot of tiles doing that. Okay, well, it's fine. I had tiles to spare. So um, all I have to do, I think, is bring this to Mistag, right? And okay, it's time for the peace talks. We're uh, unlocking a bunch of tiles in the dining room as well, but... This is what they were for. I made sure to get extra, so we're, we're chilling. And I do get my first ring from this quest, as well as 3,000 mining XP. There it is, baby Lost Tribe completed. We've been striving for this quest. At least a thousand tiles went into this and, and all its requirements. What a brutal quest, tile-wise. That took so long, man. Such an incredibly long time investment into that. All right, it's time to visit the uh, goblin black market, so to speak. Uh, something I've, I've been waiting to do. I don't know why I just called it the black market. It's, I just, it just has really cheap, powerful items, okay? I also have the ring of life, which I'm not really that interested in currently, but I'll wear it, I guess. So uh, let's put on the full void. Let's wear, let's wear the armor that we worked hard for, man. Okay, I'm so excited, man. I have so much money to spend here as well. Nardok here is our uh, goblin arms dealer. Uh, so I'm very, very happy to see him. Let's get our rightfully earned bone crossbow. There it is. And the very, very cheap bone bolts. I'll just buy like a thousand for now i mean I'll, I'll buy more but i just want to wear this right now oh it feels so right it just feels so right the void range the rune kite the bone cross but it all just seamlessly fit together everything we've been working for for this early game on the account uh we're pretty much fire cape ready if we just find a way to get like one or two prayer pots i can do a fire cape in this setup such a genuinely exciting turning point for the account to have this out of the way i'm super excited now only two days left to get the merch by the way and then it's gone forever go check it out